Remember, the NCLEX is just a safety exam. If you don't know your key numbers, then you're not a safe nurse. So please be sure to write these numbers down. Potassium of 3.5 to 5.0. Sodium 135 to 145. Calcium 9.0 to 10.5. Magnesium 1.3 to 2.1. Phosphate of 3.0 to 4.5. Now I call these the Fab Five on the NCLEX because they are need to know. So you guys need to commit these to memory. If you guys don't know these simple values, I can almost guarantee that you're going to fail boards for those electrolyte questions. The NCLEX expects you to know these key numbers because knowing when it's high and when it's low is all about safety for your client. If you can't identify critical lab values, your client can die or be severely injured. And you are not a safe nurse, so you will fail the NCLEX in this scenario. I mean, let's be honest here. If you were a patient, wouldn't you want your nurse to know these critical numbers? Wouldn't you want the nurse taking care of you or even your family member to know these critical numbers and to be able to intervene for the safest outcomes? Well, yes, of course. Okay, now as a little side note, some students always say, these numbers don't match my book. Okay, it's true, key numbers range from book to book, but these numbers are from the NCLEX, created by the NCSBN, and verified by our professors for accuracy. Hey. Starting with number one is potassium. Nursing school is hard work. SimpleNursing.com makes it simple. We take your classroom lectures and notes to create a handcrafted study plan with specialized videos and visual study guides that highlight only the top-tested need-to-know key points, coupled with thousands of practice questions to test your knowledge, all neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free today. Visit SimpleNursing.com. Simply remember, potassium pumps. Potassium pumps the heart and the body, just like electricity. So with hyperkalemia, we have too much electricity, too much pumps in the heart and the body, right? We see deep, slow pumping action here, kind of like a cramp. And with hypokalemia, too little electricity. Too little potassium means too little or basically too low pumps. The heart starts pumping very light and rapidly. Now you remember the sodium potassium pump from nursing school, right? The pump is in its name here. Potassium pumps it up, like it's a fist pump here. Now moving on to some practice questions that you may see on boards. So just simply think about it here. Which kalemia will have peak T waves or even ST elevation? Okay, so slow it down and think about the word. So remember, potassium pumps, right? So hyperkalemia, we're gonna see hyper big pumps peak T waves, and ST elevation. Now think about the client I told you about with high potassium here. He had those high pumps in the heart with ST elevation and peak T waves with that high potassium because he simply missed his dialysis appointment. Now which kalemia will have lethargy and even bradypenia, that low breathing, or that low and slow breathing really? Well, potassium pumps, right? So lethargy is that low energy, and bradypenia is that low and slow breathing. So we would expect low potassium, that hypokalemia here. Now which kalemia will cause increased DTRs and even agitation? Again, simply think potassium pumps. So increased DTRs and increased agitation, all the activity is increased here. So increased pumping action, we can expect increased potassium, that hyperkalemia over 5.0. Now what about a tricky one here? U waves and flat T waves, is that high or low potassium? Well, U wave, even if you don't know what a U wave is, just let the shape help you here. U's go down, right? So a low U is low pumps, and that is low potassium. How about bradycardia, is that high or low potassium? Another tricky one here. Decreased heart rate is that bradycardia. From a big, slow pump, the heart is basically cramping up right now. 
So this would actually be hyperkalemia, that high potassium, with a big pump, basically too much pumping action, kind of like a cramp. Now that one is the only tricky one, really. You see how simple this is? If you just know potassium pumps, then you can simply answer hyper is a high pump and hypo is a low pump for low potassium. Now as a little side note and safety tip, any potassium abnormality, what is the first nursing action? Well, you know potassium pumps the heart. So place the client on a cardiac monitor. This is the priority nursing action. And trust me, it's always asked on the NCLEX. Now ask yourself why? Because again, the NCLEX is simply a safety exam. So you being a safe nurse that you are, you're gonna protect the heart. So always remember the ABCs here. C is for circulation, which includes the heart. I still remember a client's family member suing the hospital for a big settlement. When they found out that the family member who had a heart condition, as well as low potassium, was not put on a heart monitor during their hospital stay. Now the family member was a nurse and she knew the hospital's safety policies as well as procedures. So always think safety first. Put the client on a heart monitor for any potassium imbalance. Okay, now moving on to number two, which is magnesium. The word to know is magnesium mellows out the body. So just super mellow and relaxed. So think hyper mag, we have too much magnesium, too much mellow, everything is calm and quiet. What about hypo mag? Too little mellow. Everything is just buck wild and really crazy. Talk about cray cray. Okay, now for some practice questions. Which magnesium has a heart block? Is that gonna be high or low mag? Well, just think about it here. Magnesium mellows the heart, right? So too much mellow will slow the heart and block it. So a heart block is too much mellow. So too much magnesium. This would be high magnesium, that hypermagnesemia. Okay, now what would you expect with low mag? Increased or decreased DTRs, those deep tendon reflexes. So think about it. Low mag is low mellow. Wild and crazy body, right? So increased DTRs, that hyperreflexia, with low mag, that low mellow. How about torsadas de pointes? Is that high or low mag? Well, first off, you're probably thinking, what the bleep is torsadas de pointes? Okay, here's a tip. If you don't know a word on the NCLEX, just simply let the name help you here. So torsadas kind of sounds like tornado, right? Now ask yourself, are tornadoes calm or are they crazy? Well, they're crazy. And remember, magnesium mellows the body. So this must be low magnesium where we have low mellow. Everything's wild and crazy. We basically have a tornado on the heart. Now this always reminds me of what my old charge nurse, Nurse Rick, would say. Tersadas de Pointes is like a tornado, just like his ex-wife. She came into his life wild and crazy like a tornado with lots of energy and ended up ruining his life, leaving him without a truck, his house, and even his dog. <laughs> I still remember him. Rick had life a little bit rough. So just remember the key point here. Remember tersadas with low magnesium from that tornado in the heart. Now, will a tornado in the heart kill the client? Yes or no? You have to think about it here. Of course it's going to kill the client. The heart's pretty important. So a tornado in the heart is not gonna provide perfusion to the body. So will it be top tested? Yes or no? Well, think about it and click safety here. The deadliest conditions are the most tested conditions. So you should be sure to write this down. Torsadas de Pointes appears with low magnesium because we have low mellow. Okay, now a very simple question here that loves to show up on boards. What will treat Torsadas de Pointes and save the client's life? Well, slow it down and think here. Magnesium mellows the heart, right? So we just give magnesium sulfate and then boom, the client's life is saved and we are Gucci. Now moving on to number three, calcium. Remember the word calcium contracts the body. 
So with hypercalcium, we have high contractions, a very tight, hard body. And with hypo, we have low contraction, a very like loose and wild body here. Now for some practice questions, which calcemia would have constipation? Well, think about it. Calcium contracts. So hypercalcemia, we have a tight contracted body. So we'd expect hypercalcemia. Now, which calcemia would have diarrhea? That would be hypocalcemia from that loose body with loose stools. Which calcemia would have renal calculi, those kidney stones, and even severe muscle weakness? We'll just slow it down and break it down. Renal calculi are those kidney stones. And think about it, are stones hard? They are hard, right? So it's a tight, hard body. And that would be high calcium or that hypercalcemia. Okay, those were just a little bit easy. But which would have a cheeky smile when stroking the side of the face or even an arm torque when putting a blood pressure cuff on? Now this one's a little bit tricky. This is low calcium and you have to know this for boards. Just think wild, loose body here. So the two key signs that love to show up on the NCLEX, and you should write this down, for low calcemia. Just think of the T's and the C's. Again, be sure to write this down for low calcium. It's always top tested. The T is for trousseaux and tetany. Trousseaux is that arm to work with the blood pressure cuff on. And tetany is those wild spastic muscles, or basically muscle spasms. Now the C is for shavastics and even circumoral tingling. Shavastics is that cheeky smile when stroking the side of the cheek. You must know that one by heart. It loves to show up on the NCLEX. Now I simply remember these as two big dance moves of low calcium, just a wild loose body. Because remember, calcium contracts. So with low calcium, we get that wild loose dance move here. It reminds me of a time a client came into the ER with diarrhea and muscle weakness. Now at the time, we're just like, oh, the client has dehydration, right? So after taking the client's blood pressure, we saw the fingers and even the arm just like cramping up. And I thought, that's weird. That's a twerking arm with a blood pressure cuff on. Then the client goes to scratch their face and boom, they reveal like a cheeky smile, like a cheek cramp almost. Now, I was working in Orange County at the time, which is Surftown, USA. And my coworker, who loved to surf, was like, dude, the client has low calcium, bro. Okay, now me being a new nurse at the time, I was like, wait a minute, how do you know that? We didn't even check the client's labs yet. But it was the T's and the C's. You see the twerking arm and even fingers with the blood pressure cuff on, that's trousseaux. And the cheeky smile with shavastics right there. Now, why does the NCLEX always test on this? And why do you have to know these signs? Well, you have to think, is low calcium dangerous? Yes or no? Well, yes, of course. So that's why it's top tested. Now, as a little side note and a big NCLEX tip here, before we move on to the last two electrolytes, think about it. Any thyroid surgery causes a big risk for low calcium due to the parathyroid right here. So watch for key terms. Anything that includes the word thyroidectomy, even the word parathyroidectomy, it has the word thyroidectomy inside the name. This is the removal of the thyroid. So just think, if you remove the T, then you gotta check the C. If you remove the thyroid, then you have to check the calcium for low calcium. Now this becomes really fun because the two dance moves for low calcium is also T and C. So T for trousseaux, that arm torque with the blood pressure cuff on, and C is for shavastics, that cheeky smile when stroking the side of the face. Now moving on to number four, which is phosphate. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.